Maroons all over the world have their own African-based spiritual systems. Most people don't know this, but the Maroons are actually monotheistic, with their own names for God and spiritual beings. In this video, we will learn which God the Maroons worshipped, what their names were and how their spiritual systems are organized. Stay tuned to learn more. The early Maroon spirituality was influenced by both West and Central African traditions. As a reminder, Maroons are the descendants of those who escaped bondage to live free, sovereign lives. They have legal freedom, parcels of land, and political autonomy, to some degree, to run their own lives. As it is, there were four major Maroon communities in Jamaica whose spirituality we have been able to study. They are Akompong in the west, Scott Hall and Charlestown in the east central area, and the largest and most well-known community in the eastern Blue Mountains known as Moortown. The Moortown Maroon community is still active. Now the first Christian missionaries made their way to the Moortown Maroon community in the 1820s. Within a few decades, an Anglican church was established in the heart of the village, leading to the conversion of nearly the entire community. Throughout the 19th century, this church remained the sole mission in Moortown, exerting a strong influence over the community's religious practices. Despite the widespread adoption of Christianity, the traditional African religions adapted and persisted, mixed in with Christian practices. This blend of ancestral African religions with Christianity worked because of the Maroons' ability to adapt and integrate outside spiritual elements into their culture. While Christianity became the formal religion of the community, addressing spiritual and afterlife concerns, the traditional Maroon beliefs continued to play a crucial role in daily life and in handling major crises through ceremonies such as the spiritual ceremony Maroons called the Cromanti Dance. As time passed, the religious dominance in Moortown shifted from the Anglican Church. By the 1940s, a variety of other Christian sects began to establish a presence, diversifying the religious influences within the community. New churches like the Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Church of God, many of them with foreign roots, started to challenge the older Anglican traditions and were less tolerant of Maroon practices and spiritual ceremonies. Today, the influence of these newer Christian groups has grown even further, leading to a decline in participation in traditional Maroon rituals, particularly among the younger generation. Many churches now actively discourage involvement in practices like traditional Maroon worship which they view as contrary to their beliefs. Despite these changes, the traditional belief system still had a place in Moortown. Elements of these beliefs persist and become very relevant during times of crisis, when even those who typically follow strict Christian doctrines might seek assistance from the few remaining traditional ritual spiritualists. Contrary to popular belief, Maroons are monotheists believing in one supreme creator deity. In the spiritual universe of the Moortown Maroons, the supreme deity, god of all gods, is known as Yankipong or Tatanyame. Yankipong reigns from the sky. Considered omnipotent, omnipresent and creator of all, Yankipong is seen as distant, usually unconcerned with the day-to-day -day affairs of humans. However, in times of exceptionally grave need, his aid can be sought through prayer. But under normal circumstances, Yankipong is not accessible by direct communication. Since direct communication with Yankipong is not typical, the Maroons connect with the spiritual world through the spirits of their ancestors. These ancestral spirits are vital to the Maroon community. They are closely linked to the living and exert a significant influence over daily life, capable of bringing both blessings and hardships. They operate as a go-between between humans and Yankipong. In Moortown, 
the connection between the living and the ancestral spirits is profound and active. Maroons maintain a close relationship with these spirits, who in many ways resemble living persons with desires, needs, emotions, and personalities. Like interacting with fellow human beings, ancestral spirits can be angered or appeased, threatened or cajoled. However, these spirits also possess supernatural powers. When given proper attention and offerings, they sometimes extend these powers to assist the living, influencing events in tangible ways. In the 1800s, control over these spirits was sometimes referred to by the Maroons as Obia, similar to other parts of Jamaica. However, as time passed, Obia took on negative connotations often associated with the misuse of spiritual power for harmful purposes. The term science has emerged as a modern alternative acceptable to be used as a description of their spiritual practices. In the spiritual science of the Maroons, ancestral spirits are arranged in a distinct hierarchy, with each tier playing a unique role within the community. At the very apex are the ancient spirits, revered figures who lived centuries ago. These include legendary heroes like Kojo and Nani, whose deeds are etched in the memory of the Maroons. At the top of the ancestral spirits, who are below Yankipong, are the spirits of four ancient Maroon warriors, sometimes referred to as Generals, Sui Formento, Okonoko, Pus, and Welcome. These spirits are the ancestral founders of the four primary Maroon tribes or nations, Dokose, Igbo, Mongola, and Prapa. Over time, these ancient generals have grown distant from human affairs, their great age granting them tremendous power but making them less accessible to the living. In the Maroon religion, the more time passes, the more powerful the ancestral spirits get, but at the same time, the more further they are removed from human affairs. Below these venerable ancestors lies a vast array of other spirits whose power diminishes as their connection to the living increases. This lower echelon includes countless named spirits remembered by the community. Each individual who has passed away within a few generations and is still remembered by name is considered part of this active spiritual tier. Under the four generals is another group of four ancient warriors whose spirits also possess great power, Wendandu Kofi, Jinsandi Kofi, Kromanti Kofi, and Wanyahi Kofi. None of the early Maroon spirits play a significant role in the spiritual Kromanti dance ceremony. Although becoming filled by an ancestral spirit is a key aspect of the ritual, it's usually the younger, less powerful spirits that fill living individuals. It's believed that being filled by one of the truly ancient spirits can be extremely violent and might even cause the death of the person that the spirit is communicating through. Beneath the ancient spirits mentioned above, there's a large group of ancestral spirits whose powers diminish the closer they are to the living. Many of these spirits are remembered by name and are in constant interaction with the living. Any Maroon who has passed away within the past few generations, as long as they are still remembered by the living, belongs to this group. According to how Maroon religion is organized, it would then be very important to remain in touch with your ancestors. The longer your ancestors have been dead, or the further back they are in your family line, the more powerful they would be. Maintaining a connection to the ancestors, while at the same time remembering that they are subservient or underneath the large guard Yankipong, is an essential part of understanding Maroon religion. The spiritual framework of the Maroons has to be acknowledged as a unique blend of African traditions with Christian influences. The enduring reverence for Yankipong, the supreme deity, along with the role played by ancestral spirits, underscores just how similar their spiritual systems are to modern religions. For example, 
it could be compared to how some religions have saints and historical characters that are revered. The influence of interceding figures that are less powerful than the God of all gods, yet powerful enough to impact daily life, or at least worthy of being imitated, is a common feature across religions. If anything, it validates Maroon religion as it helps to demonstrate that at their core, plenty of religions share similar features to Maroon religion with different levels of emphasis and different names. The principles are the same though, revered figures who have achieved spiritual levels beyond the average person. The top 10 major religions in the world all have a similar concept, albeit to a varying degree. Now, before I let you go, here is a little teaser. The Maroon groups we have studied for this video's research have a special way of communicating with the ancestral spirits mentioned earlier. It is called the Chromanti Dance. This special ritual is a deep spiritual practice that has its roots in Africa. During this ceremony, Maroons are able to communicate with the spirit realm to get answers, find solutions, and get divine direction. The next video in this series will go over the details of this spiritual ceremony so that we can preserve the African connected practices of these Jamaican Maroons. In addition to this group, we will also explore the Surinamese Maroons in upcoming videos. If you are interested in seeing more videos about Maroon spiritual practice or the Surinamese Maroons, let me know in the comments. Thank you.